good morning students hope all of you are fine as you know that we are discussing chapter 5 of civics and name of this chapter is democratic rights until now we have discussed about the various incidents those violated the democratic rights in different countries and with that we also discussed the fundamental rights uh, the right to equality and right to freedom so today we will discuss the topic right against exploitation as you know that once the right to liberty and equality is granted it follows that every citizen has a right not to be exploited yet the constitution makers thought it was necessary to write down certain clear provisions to prevent exploitation of the weaker section of the society means major guidelines and regulations those are also mentioned in our constitution to just to prevent the exploitation of the weaker section like the constitution mentions three specific evils and declares these illegal the very first is the constitution prohibits traffic in human beings so here traffic means selling and buying of human beings usually women for immoral purposes that is strictly banned then the second one is our constitution also prohibit forced labor or begar in any form begar is a practice where the worker is forced to render service to the master free of charge or at a nominal remuneration when this practice takes place on a lifelong basis it is called the practice of bonded labor bandhua mazdoor right so all these three things that human trafficking then the begar system these are prohibited under our constitution and the third one is the prohibition of child labor no one can employ a child below the age of 14 to work in any factory or mine or in any other hazards work such as railways and ports using this as a basis many laws have been made to prohibit children from working in industries such as bd making fire crackers and matches printing and dyeing so child labor is also prohibited under our constitution now the next right is uh, right to freedom of religion as you know that india is a secular country there is no country religion we can follow we can advertise we can propagate any religion of our choice so here right to freedom includes right to freedom of religion as well in this case too the constitution makers were very particular to state it clearly you have already read in chapter 3 that india is a secular state most people in india like anywhere else in the world follow different religions some may not believe in any religion so this secularism it is based on the idea that the state is concerned only with relations among human beings and not with the relation between human beings and god and as you know the secular state also mean that it doesn't establish any one religion as its official religion as we know uh, like if we talk about saudi arabia so in saudi arabia islam is their official religion but in india there is no official religion indian secularism practices an attitude of a principle and equal distance from all religions the state has to be neutral and impartial in dealing with all religions uh, i think you must remember that we discussed in previous chapter also that even during election uh no political party can use any religious place uh just for its uh, we can say the just to advertise their political issues 
right they cannot use any religious place for this so every person has a right to profess practice and propagate the religion he or she believes in and every religious group or sect is free to manage its religious affair a right to propagate one's religion however doesn't mean that a person has right to compel another person to convert into his religion by means of force fraud inducement or allurement means we cannot force anyone else just to follow any particular religion of course a person is free to change religion on his or her own will freedom to practice religion doesn't mean that a person can do whatever he wants in the name of religion for example one cannot sacrifice animals or human beings as offerings to supernatural forces or gods religious practices which treat women as inferior or those that infringe women's freedom are not allowed for example one cannot force a widowed woman to shave head or wear white clothes that cannot be enforced by law that it is against our indian constitution all these evil practices a secular state is one that doesn't confer any privilege or favor on any particular religion no does it punish or discriminate against people on the basis of religion they follow thus the government cannot compel any person to pay any taxes for the promotion of maintenance of any particular religion or religious institution means the government cannot impose any particular tax that some person is following this religion so they are to uh, just pay these taxes it is not like that like i just want to share one example during the mughal uh, empire during that the, uh, time the jizya tax was there and in this jizya tax it was for the non muslims uh, whenever they want to visit some uh, pilgrimage then they are to pay this tax right but now at present like india is a democratic country india is a secular country and we are blessed with the right to freedom of religion so there will not be any taxes for the promotion or the maintenance of any particular religion there shall be no religious instructions in the government educational institution in educational institutions managed by private bodies no person shall be compelled to take part in any religious instruction or to attend any religious worship so this was about the right to freedom of religion now our next right is cultural and educational rights so we might wonder that why the constitution makers were so particular in providing written guarantees of the rights of the minority why everything is in written form in our constitution because the simple reason is the working of democracy gives power to the majority as the representatives they are elected by the people so whatever majority of people will be there the government will be formed by them that was the reason that all these guaranteed rights are provided to the citizens of india it is the language culture and religion of minorities that needs special protection otherwise they may get neglected or undermined under the impact of the language religion and culture of the majority that is why the constitution specifies the cultural and educational rights of the minorities <clears throat> now here few specific uh, points are mentioned related to this topic the very first point is any section of citizen with the distinct language or culture have a right to conserve it then 
admission to any educational institution maintained by government or receiving government aid cannot be denied to any citizen on the ground of religion or language any educational institution cannot deny the admission child uh, just on the basis of religion or language and as you know that it will violate the right to equality also then all minorities have the right to establish and administer educational institution of their choice here minority doesn't mean only religious minority at the national level at some places people speaking a particular language are in majority and people speaking a different language are in a minority like telugu speaking people form a majority in andhra pradesh but there are a minority in the neighboring state of karnataka six constitute a majority in punjab but they are minority in rajasthan haryana and delhi but all these religious communities or linguistic communities they have the right to preserve their language to preserve their culture so beta this was the topic for today hope all of you have understood uh, understood this topic thank you and have a nice day